Carbocations play a central role in the SN1 reaction. It's the carbocation that is formed in the rate determining step, and then it's what happens to the carbocation that determines the products ultimately. First, I'd like to talk a bit about the rate determining step and the formation of the carbocation, relative rates, and then secondly, we'll talk about what happens to the carbocation once it's formed. Take a look at what I've written up here. I've written a leaving group attached to a tertiary butyl group. So once that leaving group leaves, it forms a tertiary carbocation. Let's compare this to a slightly different structure. What if one of the methyl groups were not there and we had a hydrogen instead? So let's consider that we have a hydrogen rather than a methyl group with this carbon. And now this is a secondary carbon and we'll make a secondary carbocation. We know the SN1 reaction with secondary alkyl groups is slower. My question is why? What helps us understand this? Well, if we go back to our energetics, which is what the rates are all about, we could put up an energy diagram, a pair of axes, and a curve that shows the formation from the substrate of the carbocation. And we know that it's the activation energy that determines the rate of the reaction. So let's draw it in. And what we're saying when we say that this secondary alkyl group to form a secondary carbocation has a slower rate is that the activation energy is greater. So for the secondary substrate, we're gonna have a higher activation energy and a less stable carbocation. We remember perhaps that this secondary carbocation, less stable than tertiary, so here, here's the activation energy for the formation of the secondary carbocation. It's greater, and that's why the rate is slower. But why is it greater? It's greater because the transition state of this step is less stable. And why is the transition state less stable? Well, because we can't take a picture of that transition state, it has so little lifetime. We have to make a guess at what that transition state looks like. And it's the Hammond postulate that lets us decide that if we're going to guess, we should guess that the transition state looks a fair amount like product in this case, because energetically, it's a lot more like product than it is reactant. So what we're saying, in other words, is in the transition state, that leaving group is mostly left. Let's draw that out. Transition state that has a very long bond, a stretched bond that's mostly broken between the leaving group which now has a partial minus, and the carbon, which now has a partial plus. And this transition state then has a carbon atom that looks a lot like a carbocation. So once we've figured out that this carbocation that is being made is mostly made, and so the transition state looks mostly like the carbocation we're making, we can conclude that the things that stabilize the carbocation stabilize the transition state. And that's the explanation for one transition state being more stable than another. The transition state leading to the more stable tertiary carbocation is more stable for the same reason that the carbocation itself is more stable. And why is that? Well, tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations because alkyl groups attached to a carbocation donate electron density. And so a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation, is more stable than a primary carbocation. And that accounts for the relative rates that tertiary substrates that make tertiary carbocations undergo the SN1 reaction substantially faster than secondary substrates that make secondary carbocations. And by the time you're at primary carbocations, they are not formed because they are not stable enough. They don't have enough stabilization from alkyl groups.